Welcome back to Create Paradise. It's a great idea to get to know your sewing machine before you use it. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the anatomy of the sewing machine. I will break down the sewing machine parts such as thread tension dial, top and bottom loading bobbin case, feed dog, stitch selection, and so much more. This will be a quick but in-depth guide to help you on your sewing journey. I will refer to parts of the sewing machine throughout this tutorial, so if you familiarise yourself with each part of your machine, it will help you when sewing your projects. Sewing machines do vary, so it is a great idea to refer back to your sewing machine manual as you watch this video. Sewing machine manuals don't offer in-depth instruction, so use it alongside this video, and feel free to pause this tutorial as you refer back to your manual. In this chapter, we are going to look at the top section of the sewing machine, we will look at the bobbin winder thread guide, the spool holder, bobbin winder spindle, and the bobbin winder stopper. Spool holder. This holds a spool while sewing and winding the bobbin. Some sew machines have two spool holders for twin needle stitching. I will cover this in another sewing tutorial. Some spool holders hold the spool vertically, while others hold the spool horizontally. Check your manual for instruction. Bobbin Winder Thread Guide This guides the thread into the correct position when winding the bobbin. Bobbin Winder Spindle This winds the thread from the spool to the bobbin. Bobbin Winder Stopper This stops the winder from turning once the bobbin is full. In this chapter, we are going to look at the left side section of the sewing machine. We will look at the thread take-up lever, thread tension dial, automatic needle threader, and the presser foot. Thread take up lever. This moves the thread up and down while stitching and guides the thread through the machine. If you cannot see the take up lever, then turn the hand wheel towards you and the take up lever will appear. Always turn the hand wheel towards you and never away from you. If you turn the hand wheel away from you, it can cause tension issues. I will cover this in another tutorial. Thread Tension Dial You can control the upper thread tension by turning the dial up and down. Depending on the number you turn the dial to, the thread will feed faster or slower through the machine. The best thread tension setting is usually between 3 and 5, but it is always a good idea to check your sewing machine manual to ensure you select the correct thread tension for your sewing machine. Automatic Needle Threader This makes it easier to thread the eye of the needle, but not all sewing machines have an automatic needle threader, so check your sewing machine manual to see if you have this feature. Presser Foot The presser foot holds the fabric in place against the feed dog while stitching. There are a wide variety of feet that can be used to aid different sewing processes. I will go into more depth on different presser feet in another sewing tutorial. In this chapter, we are going to look at the bottom section of the sewing machine. We will look at the feed dog, needle plate, removable free arm, presser foot lifter, and the reverse stitch button. Feed dog. The feed dog is positioned directly underneath the presser foot. The metal teeth grip the fabric and feed it through the machine. The teeth guide the fabric through the machine in a forward motion, or in reverse if the reverse button is pressed. Needle plate The needle plate is usually metal and it lies directly underneath the presser foot. You will find seam allowance measurements on the needle plate. You can use the grooves on the plate as a guide while sewing. Removable free arm this can also be called the extension table. You can remove this when you want a narrower sewing surface. Removing the free arm helps when sewing cuffs, sleeves, trouser legs and other tight tubes of fabric. Bottom loading bobbin. The bobbin can either be loaded at the top or the bottom of the sewing machine. If it is loaded at the bottom of the machine, it will lay inside a bobbin case. The bobbin case not only holds the bobbin in place, but it also controls the bottom thread tension. If your bobbin loads at the bottom, you will need to remove the bobbin case to 
access your bobbin. Top loading bobbin. If you have a top loading bobbin and you do not remove it from the case and you place the bobbin directly into the sewing machine, then the thread is guided through the bottom thread tension guides. Press a foot lifter. You raise and lower this to lift up and down the presser foot when changing feet or when placing and removing fabric under the foot before and after sewing. Reverse stitch button. The reverse stitch is also known as back stitching. Reverse stitching is achieved by sewing back and forth at the beginning and the end of a seam. This stops the stitch from being unraveled. The reverse stitch button is usually represented by this symbol. To use the reverse stitch button, press and hold the button, then let go when you wish to stitch forward again. In this chapter, we are going to look at the right side section of the sewing machine. We will look at the stitch library, hand wheel, stitch width, stitch length, and stitch selection pattern dial. Stitch library. This displays the stitches your sewing machine can stitch. Some machines do not have enough room to display all the stitches, so check your manual to view all of them. Hand wheel. The hand wheel is also known as the balance wheel. You can turn the hand wheel towards you to move the needle up and down manually. This helps when pivoting corners and turning the needle by hand. Always make sure you turn the hand wheel towards you and never away from you. If you turn the hand wheel away from you, it can pull the thread back up into the machine and this can cause problems with the tension of the thread. I will go into more detail in another sewing tutorial. Stitch Width Dial This dial or button controls the width the stitch. The larger the number, the wider the stitch. On some machines it is symbolised with a zigzag line. Do not confuse this with a zigzag stitch pattern. Consult your manual for more instructions on your particular sewing machine. To change the stitch width, turn the dial or press the stitch width button. For a wider stitch, set the dial or press the button to the highest number. Stitch Length Dial this dial or button controls the length of the stitch. The larger the number, the longer the stitch. To change the stitch length, turn the dial or press the stitch length button. Most sewing machine manuals recommend a stitch length of 2.5. However, I find this is too small for my clients and if they make a mistake, it is difficult for them to unpick the stitch. A stitch length of 3 is easier to unpick and also strong enough to hold fabric together. Stitch Patterns To select your desired stitch pattern, adjust the dial or press the stitch pattern button. All sewing machines vary in their stitch selection, so if your sewing machine looks different to mine, then check your manual for more instructions. I will cover stitch patterns and how to use them in another sewing tutorial. If you want to learn more, then don't forget to subscribe to have access to my latest tutorials. I also cover a lot more important sewing information in my sewing patterns and sewing magazines. Each magazine comes with a large range of insight pages. You will learn how to use different presser feet, how to change a sewing machine needle, understand the grain line, how to set up your sewing machine for different stitches, and so much more. Each topic has its own individual page dedicated to learning that topic so you can gain an in-depth understanding of everything you will need to learn for each project and many more to come. I am dyslexic so of course all my patterns and magazines are dyslexia friendly. I hope this video was useful to you, have a great day and I will see you in the next video.